Hello everyone, this is AlzboHD with a brand new video for you here today. In this video, we will be checking out some of the most powerful and OP formable nations found in Europe Universalis IV. From insane ideas and mission sets, to absolutely haram government types and reforms, I have selected my pick of the most powerful in-game tags and nations to facilitate your quest in conquering the world. Let's get started with number 10. Starting off the list at number 10 is Deccan, the brand new formable Indian Sunni kingdom introduced in patch 1.26, corresponding with the release of the Dharma DLC. Deccan has some incredibly powerful national ideas, including bonuses to administrative efficiencies, discipline, combat ability, and army morale. Formable by the Dravidian Islamic princedoms of central and western India, Deccan is one of the very few nations that has access to administrative efficiency and its traditions, which allows for amazing synergy with late-game absolutism and the bonuses to admin efficiency from technology. Furthermore, Deccan is able to tag-switch to Hindustan to unlock more powerful mission trees and access to the Sun Never Sets achievement, which has the player conquer key provinces of the former British Empire as a Hindustani empire. On the flip side, however, Deccan requires an admin tech of 20 to form and is thus unavailable until the mid to late game of a typical campaign. Are you a self-avowed capitalist? Do you love farming ducats more than you love conquering the world in the name of God and country? If you said yeah before biting into your troop waffle, the Netherlands at number 9 on our list will certainly appeal to you. With national ideas focusing particularly on Dutch naval power, developing provinces, and amplifying trade, the Netherlands is a strong pick for a player that wants to play tall and conquer trade nodes instead of vast swaths of lands. Furthermore, given that Netherlands is only formable by Dutch cultured nations, the Netherlands is situated in the best trade node in the game, the English Channel. With trade impossible to be steered downstream from the English Channel end node, any Netherlands player who conquers and develops the node will become the richest player once trade starts flowing in from the Spice Islands. On top of their incredible geographic location, the Netherlands also benefits from the highly flexible Dutch Republic government form that is a balance between monarchy and merchant republic. With benefits ranging from trade bonuses to military buffs, depending on if you elect oranges or status to power, the Dutch Republic is a versatile government form that even allows you to royal marry and contest and maintain personal unions. Be aware, however, that the Netherlands government form does unfortunately lower the absolutism cap by 30, but this can be negated by court and country, golden ages, and government reforms. The people have spoken and the parliament has elected the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth to the number 8 place on our list of most powerful formable countries. The Commonwealth is a unique formable nation as it is the only state in the game to possess the elective monarchy government form, which allows for some insane Game of Thrones type diplomatic games. If you thought Austria was the king of personal unions, you'd be mistaken. Not only does forming the Commonwealth via Poland inherit and immediately core all of the land of your personal union partner, normally Lithuania, but it also allows you to cycle through many dynasties, allowing you to go on a PU rampage. If you check the disputed succession tab on the top of the screen, for example, you will be able to support heirs and kings that match the dynasty of a failing nation, and then quickly claim their throne for a free personal union. In combination with the abdicate throne mechanic, you can quickly support the heir needed for the PU, and then drop your king to cycle through dynasties and claim the throne of any target nation. On top of this crazy and advanced strategy, the Commonwealth shares Poland's incredible idea set that focuses on the army and notably on the cavalry. When the winged hussars arrive, Poland will be sure to enforce pierogi on any and all neighboring countries that dare to oppose it. At number 7 on our list of most powerful formable countries is a sleeping giant that lies to the east of Poland, Russia. Privyet Tovarish and welcome to the freezing powerhouse that is Russia. Formable by the any East Slavic cultured nation, usually Muscovy or Novgorod, Russia is a natural fit to any player who wishes to embark on a well-balanced and nutritious world conquest. Combining military ideas that focus on pumping up manpower from the country's innumerable peasants with colonizable ideas that allow you to send free colonists without maintenance to the Siberian Gulag, Russia is truly the jack-of-all-trades in Europe Universalis IV. Russia has an amazing government form that gives additional manpower modifiers, absolutism, and autonomy reduction, but wait, there's more. On top of this, if you own the Third Rome DLC, Russia is quite possibly the most or second most powerful nation in the game. With Third Rome installed, you have access to an arsenal of overbuffed and power creeped abilities and mechanics that range from lowering all rebel factions at the same time, lowering war exhaustion while raising highly disciplined Streltsy, 
fabricating claims on an entire area at the same time, and further buffs to the already incredibly powerful Orthodox Faith. On top of the plus 33% manpower modifier, negative 3 to global unrest, and plus 2% to missionary strength at maximum patriarch authority, Russia's Orthodox Faith also gives icons to players who have Third Rome. These icons allow for incredible flexibility, including buffs to discipline, national unrest, institution spread, and more. Even if you don't have the DLC, like me, Russia is still an incredibly powerful and fun nation to form. Coming in at number 6 on our list is Rum, the Turkish from a both nation that claims to be Rome, and is certainly and unequivocally not the Ottomans. Although Rum is certainly Haram in this same nation, the national ideas and government form of Rum will have your defeated opponents drinking in despair. Formable by any of the Turkish Anatolian Beyliks, Rum features a military heavy set that focuses on army morale, discipline, and an incredible 20% reduction to core creation cost. If you thought the developers were drunk on Turkish propaganda when they made this nation, just wait until you feast your eyes upon their Ottoman government form that gives them yearly legitimacy, increased absolutism, increased state capacity, and more. But wait, we still haven't covered the harem mechanic that is unique to the Ottoman government form available to Rum. If you're the ruler of Rum is ever above the age of 30 without an heir, the player is able to pick between three selectable candidates from within the ruler's harem and can view their stats before picking the best one. Rum is the best pick of nation for any player that feels too dirty to play the Ottomans, but still wants to spread the wombo combo of rum and kebab throughout Europe, Asia, and beyond. Make the Byzantines cry and Christensen hate you by becoming the definitive Sultan of Rum and conquer Constantinople, Rome, and Moscow for additional salt, seasoning, and the achievement of the same name. Next up on the list at number 5 is the Italian Stallion of Italy. If you are an advanced player that is able to negotiate and overpower the incredibly dense and highly developed Italian region without succumbing to coalitions spanning from Iberia to Asia, Italy is the formable nation for you. Sporting a versatile idea set that focuses primarily on trade and military power, Italy also wields one of the only plus 25% core creation reduction modifiers in the game. If going wide and heavy on the carbohydrates is your preferred playstyle, Italy is an excellent choice that has natural synergy with administrative ideas and absolutism. Before long, you too can spread the magic of pizza and tortellini alfredo for almost no cost at all, with provinces late game costing single-digit core costs if Italy is played with optimal idea sets that capitalize on their national ideas. Although any Italian cultured nation can form Italy, true historically-minded players can open with Savoy, form Piedmont Sardinia, and then conquer and form Italy and relive Garibaldi's fantasies. Truly skilled players can also use Italy's optimal expansion-minded ideas to conquer the Mediterranean and form the Roman Empire, a formable nation that may or may not be... Number 4 on our list. Salve, fellow EU4 player. The Senate and people of Rome greet you. If you are somehow able to unite all of the Mediterranean lands and portion of Britain, the Black Sea, and Asia Minor under your control, as any Christian nation, you will be able to form the majestic Roman Empire. Exchanging powerful discipline, diplomatic reputation, and production idea sets for a slight reduction in core creation cost, Rome has jaw-droppingly powerful ideas to match the daunting task of forming them in the first place. Any player that forms Rome will obtain the Mera Nostrum achievement and have their primary culture switch to Roman, a culture that belongs to the esoteric Lost Cultures group. Rome has a particular significance for me, as I was able to achieve my first Iron Man World Conquest with them by starting as Theodoro and forming them through ridiculously lucky PU magic and relentless conquest. If you want to see my Theodoro to Roman Empire World Conquest time-lapse, I'll have the video link available at the title credits at the end of this video. Goose stepping their way into number 3 on our list is the Kingdom of Prussia. Formable by Brandenburg, the Teutonic Order, or any nation with Prussian, Saxon, or Pomeranian culture, Prussia is by far the most militarily powerful nation in the game. With their national ideas providing them discipline, combat ability, army tradition, army morale, and national manpower modifiers, Prussia is perfect for any would-be Frederick the Great that is intent on unifying Germany and crushing France under their iron fist. Their unique government form of Prussian monarchy gives them additional national unrest reductions, monthly war exhaustion reductions, an almost guaranteed ruler with six military skill, increases in maximum absolutism and loyalty to the nobility estate, 
As if that wasn't already overkill, Prussia also benefits from the unique mechanic of militarization that provides them scaling bonuses to discipline, manpower recovery speed, and army maintenance modifiers contingent on their size. Smaller, taller, and more compact Prussias are able to benefit from a whopping plus 10% to discipline, while larger and more spread out Prussias miss out on the majority of these benefits. A player that is intent on conquering the world can easily circumvent this intentional design mechanic by establishing powerful vassals, marches, and or client states that they can feed territory to while maintaining Prussian supremacy for the insane military benefits of 100% militarization. Indeed, where some states have an army, the Prussian army has a state. Long live the Prussian Space Marines. Nearing the top of our list at number 2 is the Fallen Dynasty of the Yuan. Any Altaic or Mongolian cultured tribe that is able to conquer China and steal the Mandate of Heaven from the Ming Dynasty is able to form this incredibly rare and monstrously powerful formable nation. Possessing arguably the best national idea set in the game, Yuan ideas focus primarily on buffing army morale, discipline, shock damage, and cavalry power but also include a rare plus 5% to administrative efficiency along with a negative 25% reduction to core creation cost and a fantastic negative 10% technology cost modifier. In many ways a double-edged sword, Yuan also requires the unique mandate of heaven mechanic that forces the Yuan player into the celestial empire government form. This is excellent because it allows you to benefit from high mandate modifiers, which include national unrest reduction and stability cost reduction, and also allows you to pass reforms that further reduce coring costs, give you an additional diplomat, and much more. Furthermore, you are able to benefit from a vast network of tributary states that can funnel you much needed ducats, admin, military, or diplomatic mana each year. On the flip side of this, however, is that if you border a non-tributary state that is massive or highly developed, your mandate will tank and you will be subjected to crippling penalties to your army and to your nation at zero mandate. To counter this and to use mandate to your advantage, you can release vassals, marches, or client states that border larger nations and conquer the world by feeding your subject states territories so that your mandate remains high and you can pass all five reforms. If you're somehow able to conquer all of China as Yuan and Iron Man, you can also obtain the exceedingly rare back and control achievement. Coming in at the top of our list of most powerful formable nations to play in Europe Universalis 4 is the Mughal Empire at number 1. Alongside many of the sweeping balance and gameplay changes introduced with the Dharma DLC are massive buffs that have catapulted the Mughals into the undisputed top tier nation for conquering the world. Boasting insane national ideas that include 25% core creation cost reductions, discipline, national unrest reductions, and technology cost reductions, the Mughals are natural conquerors. Their unique mission tree provides incredibly powerful cores and claims on the Indian subcontinent, and their one-of-a-kind government form allows you to accept any culture in the game once you conquer all of that culture's provinces. As if that wasn't already broken enough, once you conquer a culture group, you also obtain an incredibly powerful buff that lasts the duration of your entire campaign. These buffs range from extra diplomats and merchants to further reduced coring costs, trade efficiencies, and pretty much every other beneficial effect that's available in the game. In this regard, the Mughals have not only the best ideas, but can also obtain every buff that you'd ever want, and consequently they snowball faster than other states in the top tier of most powerful nations. If you want to take the assimilation even farther, truly mad lads can convert from Sunni to Confucian to harmonize all religions in the game allowing the player to accept all cultures and religions, and virtually eliminating all rebel problems you'd ever have. If you can conquer the entire Indian subcontinent starting as a timbered vassal, you can also obtain an achievement for the Mughals. Before ending the video, I would like to point out some formable nations that will release soon that might presumably be even more powerful than those already listed. Recent dev diaries have illustrated the upcoming formable nations of the Ilkhanate and Mongolian Empire. Considering that these formable nations will require substantial amounts of prequisites to form, we can infer that their missions and national ideas will be incredibly powerful. That concludes my top picks for most powerful formable nations in Europe Universalis 4. What formable nations do you enjoy playing? Do you enjoy playing the most powerful formable nations? Do you agree with my list? Let me know in the comment box below. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.